how to create maximum distance for your potential without huge amount of effort or work. A unique practice drill to get you to create the right amount of lag and use it the right way. It's important we use it the right way. And it's also important we don't create lag the wrong way. So in essence, lag is basically for me, the angle form between the shaft and the lead arm as we swing down. So creating this kind of 90 degree angle and hanging onto it for longer than perhaps a lot of amateurs would do is the key. Now what happens with a lot of amateurs, they throw this golf club and cast the club too early. Now, to be factually correct, this golf club is always widening in the way down. It's always losing some of this angle. But what we see with a lot of amateur golfers is they lose this angle too quickly. Sometimes by moving the torso forward and they get the kind of opposite reaction with the arms. And sometimes it's because of the way they swung back and sometimes it's just their desire to hit the golf ball up in the air. So what we're looking to do when we create lag is try and make sure we don't do it by widening the arms and cupping the wrist. And we don't do it by going forward with the torso. The idea would be, and again, we've got this setup. This is what I call my wall. If I take my setup to this bag here, if I make a backswing from here, I will just about clip that wall. So the idea is go to the top of a backswing, making a false backswing. Then on the way down, I want to see the golf club come narrower than that, but at the same time, I want this wrist to go into flexion. So the idea is the arms are being moved and propelled more forward, and I'm trying to maintain the wrist angle to a better amount. So that means I'm happy with it loosening a few degrees, but I'm not throwing the club early. So the idea is really, if we go to the top of the swing again, full backswing, and practice that downswing, that's the feels we want. Once we've created this lag sensation, we then have to throw the club. So it's important then we throw the club into what I call the straight line condition, just past the ball. If I hang onto that lag too long, I'm not utilizing that speed and power angle that I am generating. The longest hitters in the world will have lots of lag, but also lose it drastically fast in that last section of the downswing. And that's what creates the speed. That's what creates this hand kind of explosion on the golf ball. But in impact, they would still have shaft lean. Cameron Champ, for example, his low point is nine inches past the golf ball. So, but he's got huge amounts of lag and then he loses it, but the throwing action is way past the golf ball. And that hitting down with lag, with speed, <laughs> creates the massive distance he achieves. So what we're gonna try and do is one, feel we generate the right amount of lag and arms forward from this exercise. Then give you a second exercise, which allows you to do it without this there. And then we're gonna concentrate on throwing the club the right way to lose the lag, but we have to get it to lose it. So what I'd like you to do is set this up. If I pace this out, I've got this golf bag sat two yards behind me with a rod sticking out of it. Now do this very slowly and very carefully. Then I would make a fox backswing and then practice downswings where you don't hit that rod at all. That's the feeling we're looking to generate. If you're brave, I want you to hit some shots doing that exact drill. If you're not brave, we would move the bag back a further yard and hit shots with it there. So let me go through that. So being brave, false backswing, in position, and hit. So I definitely felt like everything went more forward and it created that kind of more laggy, sharper, dynamic angle with the wrists and arms and club on the way down. Probably could have had a bit more wrist flexion to make it even better, but in terms of achieving part one, happy. So if we take the bag now and move it back, like a yard, so it becomes now more a visual than a real constraint. So if I now put the golf ball in place, I'm visually trying to create the same feels. And that's the best strike I've hit for absolutely ages. Nice bit of turf, flight was beautiful. Really, really happy with that. Great feel. So maybe that should be my new practice wing on the course. So loved that. Let me give you one more lag drill to do and then we'll talk about throwing. 
So the last lag drill I want you to do is what I call the thumbs off drill. So in your normal setup, raise your thumbs up off the club, just like this. Well, I want you to make golf swings with your thumbs off. It'll feel ridiculously out of control. But this stops you pushing your thumbs in transition to lose that lag. So it's a great way of creating extra natural lag. So thumbs off and swing. Don't massively worry about how good you hit the shots. It does get easier the more shots you hit, but you have to hit a few in a row to get that feeling. But it's definitely a great way of letting the fingers work harder in that transition rather than the thumbs. It's an unusual, unusual drill, but it does make a difference. Like all drills, they're drills. They're there to influence. They're not there to be your new swing. So if you see me doing a funky drill, it doesn't mean that's what your swing should be. It's what we're trying to get your swing to change to. So your inline condition, where everything should be straight, is around about here. So we're going to put that golf ball just in front there. So what we're going to concentrate on doing now is throwing that club into that straight position at that ball, or even beyond that ball is fine for me, just not at that ball. The more we can move it this way, the more we can use that lag later, but we're still using it. Gravity in the centrifugal force, everything is getting the club to want to do this. So it's very much going to happen naturally, okay? But we want to just make sure we focus on trying to throw that golf club into our inline condition there. So look at what I'm doing there. Everything's in line, and my chest is rotating and starting to go up. Great strike. And so the only thought I had there was make a nice backswing and throw, get my body to react to that ball on the ground.